Alright, this is going to be my pet show on how to breed fruit flies. Fruit flies, oftentimes you'll see these things in the store. Some people might not even, you know, buy these or know what they're really supposed to be used for. Fruit flies are great. They're, they're good for small lizards, like my current Rankin's Dragons. They're good for small leopard geckos, like any type of baby lizard that is small and, you know, isn't big enough to eat crickets from the store then these are perfect. Now you can buy small crickets online and some stores have small crickets which are also good but these things honestly breed and are easier to keep than crickets. Crickets are smelly. Uh, if you breed a lot of crickets they get pretty smelly. These guys I really don't notice any smell from them so that's one really nice thing about them. The only drawback to them versus crickets is crickets do get larger so crickets can feed a, a larger variety of of animals. These are pretty small so they're limited in what you can feed them to. Some good things to feed them to are any type of small reptile or amphibian uh, especially you know there's, there's poison dart frogs perfect for those uh, but any type of baby reptile or baby amphibian and they're also good to throw in fish tanks you know lots of fish will really enjoy having a having some live insects thrown in and you know the turtles would go after them so they're really good for many types of pets and they're really cheap because you can breed them non-stop for free pretty much the only thing you have to buy is fruit fly media now I don't have the container for this because it broke uh, it came actually broken it was a tub and it had a crack in it so I put it in this bag but it's just called fruit fly media you can get different types all of them pretty much work the same you mix them with water and I've got one that I mixed up here. All you do is, here, this is the fruit fly media. That's what's in this bag. And you mix this with water, about equal this to water. And then the only other thing you throw in is a little bit of baker's yeast. It'll tell you on, this, on the instructions for your fruit fly media that you buy what to do. Mine said to add some baker's yeast, and most do. You get this at the grocery store. It's real simple to find there. If you can't find it, just ask somebody baker's yeast, you just put a couple pinches in, you know, like like a salt shaker, if it was like, because it's kind of like grainy like that, I would say like, you know, two or three shakes of a salt shaker, just just a little pinch of that. And basically what we're making is one of these. As you can see, this has the media on the bottom. Now their media that they use is blue. The color doesn't matter, it's, it's a different type of media, but it works. Inside here they do have this red uh, thing, that's for them to climb on. I really should add something for them to climb on in here. Uh, I don't have anything in there. I might add something soon. I just made this one up. Um, so what you do is you, you put in your, your fruit fly media, you mix it with water, you put in your yeast, and then you add your bugs. And you buy this at the store. And as you can see, I got tons in here. So what I did is I added some in, about 50. And I'm going to shake it. See all of them in there? And now they're going to start breeding in there and laying their eggs. And in about a week there'll be tons of maggots or larvae and here is one that I made a week ago this one you can't see through I made it the exact same it's made with the same product the fruit fly media I have with some baker's yeast and I, I made this one about a week ago and this is what you get in about a week as you can see all of the maggots and there are tons in there you really can't this doesn't really do it justice because there are thousands in here. You just can't see them all because most of them are down in the media. Most of the maggots will stay down in the food and they'll eat away at the food and then when they're gonna start hatching into flies that's when they'll come up and stay on the sides. Seems like some went down too because I opened this up just a couple minutes ago and there seemed to be more on the sides so I think the light made them go down. But there are thousands. So that's what you end up with, and then about a week after they are late or so, then they'll turn into fruit flies. And I actually like this one, I don't like that you can't see through it, but what I did is I just put some paper towel in here to clog it out, but the air can still get through. And what I plan on doing is when they turn into flies, I just plan on unplugging this and putting this in my Rankin's Dragons cage, probably on the side so it's down by the ground. And then the Rankin's Dragons will figure out real soon that the fruit flies come out of that little hole. Once I see them eat, you know, ten fruit flies a piece or so, I'll take this out, clog it back up, and I'll use it the next day. 
So it's a real easy way, 100% free food now. I mean, I, I have to pay for this media, but this media is like, mm, I think it's like 10 bucks for a bag, and that'll make, you know, like, somewhere between 10 and 20 of these with how much I used. So it's pretty cheap. Uh, it's like a buck for, you know, thousands of fruit flies. So that's how you do it. Um, these containers don't throw out. They are small, but when your fruit flies use up all the media in here, just clean it out and reuse this container. It's a nice little small feeding container. It's, it, it's real simple to use. So I'm going to be reusing these once uh, all the fruit flies are gone from these. And, uh, you know, just make sure you got a couple containers always on hand and you'll never run out of fruit flies. So uh, if you have any questions, message me. And that was my real quick fruit fly breeding show.